It's October of 1870. You're traveling along the newly opened Kansas Territory in search of a nice place to homestead. As you near an area called Labette, you notice that it's getting late and you're tired. Your back hurts. You're hungry. And off in the distance, you see a nice cabin that says Bender Inn. You set up your horse team in the barn and enter the inn to the welcome of a sweet young lady. You ask for a meal and a place to rest for the night. The young man at the counter takes your money, and the same young lady escorts you to the head of the table. An older woman places a big plate of stew in front of you. Then bam, everything goes black. Welcome to the Bender Inn. This might sound like a scene from some horror movie about to be released, but it's actually the true story behind the first family of serial killers, the Benders. After the Civil War in the 1860s, many Americans wanted to open up the Kansas Territory to homesteading, but there was a problem. The Osage Indian tribe called those windy, grassy plains their home. The government relocated the Osage to a reservation in Oklahoma, and their route is known as the Osage Trail. In October 1870, a man and his son, John Bender Sr., around 60 years old at the time, believed to be a German immigrant, and John Bender Jr., around 25 at the time, settled in Labette County with four other families. The Benders settled a 160-acre homestead that faced the Osage Trail. Once they built a cabin and a barn, they sent for the mother and daughter to join them. In 1871, Mrs. Elvira Bender, 55 years old, who spoke very little English at the time, and her daughter, Miss Kate Bender, 23 and spoke fluent English, arrived at the cabin in Labette County. John Sr. was described by those around him as a, quote, repulsive, hideous brute, without a redeeming trait, dirty, profane, and ill-tempered. It was generally believed at the time that John Jr. was a half-wit because he had a tendency to laugh at anything. Neighbors said that seeing John Jr. excited brought a grave-robbing hyena to mind. Elvira was notoriously ill-tempered and called a she-devil and a dirty old Dutch crone. Kate stirred up the settlers by not only being pretty, but she was a self-proclaimed healer and psychic. She held seances to speak to the dead, and she openly practiced and gave lectures on spirituality and her ability to cure illnesses, which was not unheard of at the time. However, she did cause quite the scandal when it became known that she was a promoter of free love, which really didn't become popular until the 1960s. But in 1871, it was enough to draw people to the inn to see what all the hype was about. The inn itself was a fairly large one-room cabin. The benders decided to hang a large sheet of canvas to separate the cabin into two parts. The back was their living quarters, and the front housed a small general store, kitchen, and a dining area. The idyllic prairie scene turned grisly in May 1871, when a man's body was found in nearby Drum Creek. His skull was bashed in, and his throat was slit. In February 1872, the bodies of two more men were found nearby with the same gruesome injuries. By the fall of 1872, news of the brutal murders and of several unexplained disappearances had spread far and wide. People were afraid to travel that route, so they avoided it altogether. In early spring of 1873, a man named George Newton Langhorne was traveling from Independence, Kansas, to Iowa with his 18-month-old daughter, Mary Ann, when they both disappeared. Soon afterwards, Dr. William Henry York, who had sold horses and the wagon to Lancor, became concerned after the horses and wagon were found abandoned near Fort Scott, Kansas. He set out to find Lancor and Mary Ann. Dr. York followed the homesteading trail to Fort Scott and interviewed folks along the way. At Fort Scott, 
he positively identified the horses and wagon as the ones he had sold to Langhor. He wanted to return to Independence, but never made it. He decided to stop at the Bender Inn. He was never heard from again. While the Benders seemed to have free reign in their deadly game, they made a big mistake. Dr. York was from a very prominent family. His brothers were Colonel Ed York and State Senator Alexander M. York. Colonel York organized a 75-man search party to track down his brother. They ultimately tracked Dr. York to the Bender Inn. In March 1873, Colonel York interviewed the Benders, but they denied all knowledge of the missing man. Within the next few weeks, Colonel York heard rumors that a woman claimed to have barely escaped the inn when Elvira attacked her with a knife. On April 3rd, 1873, Colonel York returned to the Bender Inn with the new accusations. During this second interview, Elvira tried very hard to hide it, but ultimately, she blew it by ranting about how the woman had cursed her coffee. After her outburst, Elvira threw Colonel York and his men out. Unfortunately for the Benders, the damage had been done. Around this time, word had been spreading among the homesteaders about the disappearances and mutilated bodies. A meeting calling for search warrants for all properties in the area took place. Pa and John Jr., were at that meeting as well as Colonel York. A few days later, the neighbors noticed that the place seemed to be abandoned and the animals on the Bender farm were dying and starving. An elected town official, Leroy Dick, went to the Bender farm to investigate. He noticed a truly awful odor coming from under a trap door in the house. His call for a search party turned up hundreds of homesteaders armed with pickaxes and shovels They couldn't begin to guess what horrific scenes awaited them. Under the trap door was a secret room. Blood had clotted and soaked into the stone floor and into the dirt underneath. There were no bodies, however. This made them spread out and search the property. In the area of an orchard and garden, Dr. York's body was found, buried in a shallow grave. By the next day, Ten bodies were recovered, as well as a gruesome assortment of body parts. All of the bodies had their skulls bashed in, and their throats slit. However, little Mary Ann, Langcourt's 18-month-old daughter, appeared to be buried alive. To make the scene even worse, many of the bodies were described as being indecently mutilated, suggesting some sort of sexual trauma. From what they saw, It soon became clear how the Benders caused the sad demise of so many unsuspecting travelers. The victims would enter the inn and be given a seat at the dinner table over the trap door. Once seated, one of the men would hide behind the canvas and smash the victim's skull with a hammer. Then one of the women would slit the victim's throat and drop them through the trap door into the secret room below. Later, the body would be dismembered or just buried. Any valuables on their persons would be reappropriated by the benders. But because many of the victims were not wealthy or in possession of valuables, it appeared that they killed more for the sport rather than for the money. There were about a dozen bullet holes in the cabin, suggesting that some of the victims tried to fight back. There were few of the benders' possessions left in the cabin by the time the neighbors came to inspect it. But one thing that had remained was a Bible. At this point, nobody knows who the Benders really were, nor where they went when they abandoned their farm. The Benders seem to have ridden off into the folklore of Kansas. Senator York and Governor Thomas A. Osborne offered substantial rewards for the capture of the Benders, but to this day, the rewards have never been claimed. As for the Benders, one rumor stated that Ma and Pa fled back to St. Louis, Missouri. Another stated that John Jr. and Kate hitched a ride on the railroad down to an outlaw camp in the Badlands at the border of Texas and New Mexico. A detective claimed that he personally chased John Jr. to the border, but found him dead. Some neighbors also claimed that John Jr. and Kate were a couple instead of being brother and sister, 
Actually, neighbors thought they were common law married because she openly flaunted sexual relations with John Jr. It is also suspected that the only members who were related were the mother and daughter. And it is also thought that none of them were actually named Bender. They were all, however, serial killers. In 1884, a man fitting the description of Paul Bender was arrested in Idaho for killing someone with a hammer. When the Idaho authorities tried to get a description of the wanted man from Kansas, they soon found that the prisoner had cut off his own foot and bled to death before a positive identification could be made. In 1889, a mother and daughter, Almira and Sarah Elizabeth, were arrested for larceny in Michigan. They were, of course, accused of being Elvira and Kate Bender, and were sent to Kansas for identification. However, the women were sent back to Michigan when the eyewitness descriptions were horribly inconsistent. It is thought that Elvira is actually Almira Mark from the Adirondack Mountains area, who was rumored to have had many children by different men. It was also rumored that many of her husbands died of head injuries. It is thought that Kate was actually Elmira's fifth child, Eliza Griffith. John Sr. is thought to be John Flickinger, an immigrant from either Germany or the Netherlands. While it is true that the Benders never faced justice for their crimes, there were some involved who did. A total of 12 men were charged and convicted of being accessories for the disposal of property stolen off of the Benders' victims. It is thought that the Benders killed a dozen people, including one child. One source even claimed the number of victims was as high as 21. And what of the property today? Near Cherryvale, Kansas, the house still stands as a testament to this horrific tale. Once word spread of all that happened, people immediately flocked to the property, looting everything that they could find. There's a marker that briefly tells the tale of the bloody benders. Hammers, thought to be from the home, are housed at the Cherryvale Museum. A stained knife, thought to be from the house, is on display at the Kansas Historical Society. So even through the mists of time, this legend of the untamed West is still very much alive. It is still a joke, apparently, to call two women traveling together Elvira and Kate Bender. Was Pa Bender the man who bled to death in an Idaho jail? Were the women accused of larceny truly Elvira and Kate? And what really happened to John Jr.? Like so many puzzles from the past, we can only speculate. My name is Scott, and thank you so much for watching. We are a group of curious and passionate humans, creating documentary-style content for those who share our curiosity ask questions, and seek to dig deeper in a world where almost everything isn't quite what it seems. We are Mystery Syndicate. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, leave a comment, and give this video a like. And to be notified when we post new videos, hit that notification bell. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Patreon. And for exclusive merchandise and our blog, visit our website at www.mysterysyndicate.com. From all of us at Mystery Syndicate, thank you again. We sincerely appreciate your support.